right, today's hike, this first section of the Wachita Trail, starting out here at Talamina State Park, heading up this way, and then right after, somewhere in here, the rocks start. So it's going to be pretty rocky after this and slower, but the goal today is to make it over here to that shelter. So cruising up the trail, I got started about an hour earlier than I thought I would. So this is very fortuitous. Here's the scenario. There's the Garmin message, which always goes off when I'm talking to the camera. So here's the scenario. First off, we've got rain coming in. It's a forecast for potential hail tonight. Uh, thunderstorms in between 6 p.m. and midnight. So that's factor number one. So getting an early start is advantageous. Hoping to camp at a shelter tonight and ride that out. The hail forecast was potentially golf ball size hail. So I don't want that. Uh, gonna try to avoid that and duck that weather. Uh, the trail's beautiful right here, by the way. It's nice and wide. And uh, so that's going on second. Starting Monday morning, this entire western 30 miles of the trail will be closed for a controlled burn. So I've got to clear the first 30 miles in the first two days. Shouldn't be an issue for me, but I got really lucky. If it was a day earlier, I would have had to do like some 24 hour, 30 mile thing. So I feel very fortunate about that timing. And that's the scenario. So off we go. So how did I get here? Might be a question some folks have. So yesterday I flew from Seattle down to Dallas and then took a short flight from Dallas to Fort Smith, Arkansas, which is right on the Oklahoma-Arkansas border. And this morning, and I got an Uber ride from the airport there and got my fuel and everything set for my stove and uh, checked into the hotel. This morning I got a ride from Mike and Lynn's shuttle service and I'll put the number on the screen here. Uh, Mike was great. Mike's got a ton of background and knowledge about this trail and trails in the area. He worked for the State Park Service in Arkansas for a while. He's a foot Friends of the Wachita Trail uh, volunteer. Really extensive knowledge. Helped get the shelters built here on the west end of the trail. I enjoyed my ride with him, which lasted a little over an hour. And uh, highly recommend him. He was great. So check that out if you need a ride. And I found flying into Fort Smith to be pretty efficient. So if you're looking to get to the west end of the trail from out of town, that's not a bad way to go. Well, I'm stripping off layers as I climb. This uh, trail starts out with a good initial climb and it's windier up here. It's supposed to be windy today. So I'm expecting that. Keeping me cool at least. The next focus area will be water. I downed a liter at the trailhead, carrying a liter with me. And based on conversations I had and things I see, I'm expecting to find some a little ways down the trail and uh, be fine on that. But worst case scenario, I might have to adjust plans a bit. Working some descent into the morning.
I'm really enjoying the sounds of the wind up here as it ebbs and flows, gusts and drops off. Reminds me a lot of the waves at the beach or some other thing. It feels like you're just kind of drifting with the wind down the trail. It's definitely keeping me cool, but not too cool. It's just a beautiful day for hiking out here uh, in, the, in the 50s. Some water here that was meant for 211 which according to Mike uh, once you're past the date you are okay to take the water up here so I'm gonna help myself a little bit so there's another ridge over there and the sun's out in between it's kind of cool with that forecast for storms this evening, I'd be interested to see if with the sunlight, there's enough daytime heating to make anything happen. All right, now I'm at like mile 8.1, roughly. And that was Dead Man's Gap back there. Pretty much just a road crossing. Uh, it's great to get that water. So I'm still very thankful for that. Pulled a liter out of there, left some for somebody down the road. So now, uh, the next couple of miles, three miles, it's gonna get rockier apparently. So I've been mentally preparing myself for this, thinking about my time on the Olympic coast a couple of years ago, uh, boulder hopping for like five miles. I believe it may be somewhat similar here. We'll see. Anyway, trucking on, almost halfway done for today. Going 16.8 miles today. So about 8.1 at this point. There's Rock Garden Shelter. A lot of other people have it on their videos. I'm not staying there, so that is what I'm gonna give you for now. Uh, but you can find it elsewhere. It's a nice spot. All right, I think I've found some of what people talk about when they talk about the rocks. And I'm pretty sure there's a lot more to come. The rock theme is definitely picking up in pre prevalence after mile 11.2. First thing you do when you come to a spot like this is say, where's the blaze across the boulder field? That's right over there. And you kind of set your course based on where the blaze is. So you don't get lost or linger around too much. So I uh, feel a little low energy there for a while. 
somewhere around two o'clock, maybe three o'clock. It's closer to four now. Got my second wind a bit. About to go uphill though, so I might change everything, we'll see. But I uh, just crossed mile 14, so about 2.8 miles to go. And this trail has rocky sections, but it's not all rocks. That was my concern reading reports. It's more like boulder fields separated with mossy trail and pine needle trail and a few rocks thrown in. But it's just those bouldery sections that can be challenging and they're hard on your feet. They've definitely been hard on my feet so far. But uh, feeling good, gonna make it today. I attempted to camp right here. I think it's a campsite right near where I am that I saw pictures of online, but I wanna get into the shelter for tonight. Also, I met two guys hiking eastbound through hiking like me, Joe and Paul, and they are both going to where I'm going tonight. If all goes according to plan. And Joe has a weather radio, so that's super useful this evening. So, passed him a little while back, and I'm sure I'll see him tonight. I'll save room for him at the shelter. It looks like it might be the grand finale coming up in a little bit. This is where it really gets going at mile 15.3. Well, I'm about a mile from my camp spot tonight, Holson Valley Shelter. I was hoping to get there by six. I wasn't sure how slow the rocks would be. I was able to average two miles an hour for the day, which isn't great for me. But, uh, you know, and the rocks slowed me down, but overall, uh, I feel pretty good about that. Kept me going at a good enough pace to make it in here before dark. And that was my goal, get here before uh, 6.30, so definitely accomplished that goal. And uh, gonna enjoy the evening and wait for my guests to arrive as well. Well, it just got real dark and the clouds are moving in. I don't know if it's just late in the day or if it's got a storm coming in, but in any event, that is Holson Valley Shelter. And I am happy to see it tonight. I'm gonna call it Holson Valley Lodge tonight. It's gonna feel great to be in there. So thankful to all the foot volunteers who have advocated for this type of infrastructure on this trail. It's, uh, especially with the hail forecast, it may not happen, but it is uh, definitely appreciated. Thank you. 